Okay, this is the first lesson of Module 2. Module 2 is titled Congruence, and you may have heard a definition of congruence in the past when you've taken geometry. Um, we're going to be defining congruence as we move through this module. Lesson 1, why move things around? Okay, we're going to look at a couple three or four diagrams that you don't have in your notes, so you can just um, follow along. So given these two segments, A, B, and C, D, um, which might be far apart, how could we know if they have the same length without measuring them? Um, they look like they have the same length, but how could we check? Okay, so we're going we're gonna to talk about that. Um, again in one of the exercises but for now you could think about it and you could think about it in terms of the title of this lesson why move things around okay here's another one here's a quadrilateral ABCD where all four angles are right angles and the opposite sides are the opposite sides AD and BC of equal length so you might say that I know this is a rectangle, so I know that they are, but these are things that we actually have to prove in geometry, that given these right angles, that those opposite sides are always going to be correct. And with the definitions we're going to be coming up with, we'll be able to prove this later. Okay, here's another one. Here's two angles, angle AOB and A prime, O prime, B prime. And how can we tell whether they have the same degree without having to measure each angle individually? Okay, this is a similar question to what we saw before. And then lastly, um, here's another slightly more complicated diagram. If, um, two lines, L and L prime, are parallel, and they're intersected by another line. How can we tell if the angles angle A and angle B have the same degree when measured. So once again, we don't want to measure them directly, but we want to construct a proof that would tell us whether those angles are the same or not. So the question is, how can objects be moved in the plane so that their size and shape don't change? Because in each of these situations that we just looked at, if we could move those objects in such a way, and we need a rule, a mathematical rule for how to move them, um, if we could do it in such a way that they, their size and shape did not change, the angle size, um, the distance between points in a segment, let's look at those again, if we could know that those weren't going to change, then we could move them on top of each other and see if they coincide, if they're the same sizes um, of segments and, and angles. Okay, so the answer to um, those questions is to use something called a transformation. And so a transformation is defined as a rule and it's a rule that assigns to each point of the plane another point that we're going to call the image. So we'll call it the image of that point. And a good example or analogy of, of mapping images would be an actual map. So this is a map of New York City. Um, you can see Fifth Avenue there, Broadway. And what, what a map does, what a map is, and you know this, is that for every um, point on the actual street, um, we map that to an image on the paper map so that the paper map is just a small copy of the actual, the, you know, the real city, city blocks. Um, obviously, in this case, the map that we have, you are using is much smaller than the real streets. So it's not exactly the type of transformation that we're going to be talking about in this module, um, but it's the same idea. Okay, so the ones we're going to be talking about, we're going to call distance-preserving transformations. 
Um, these are also known as rigid motions. So rigid meaning um, stiff. And so the, you know, you think of like a mannequin, you move it around and its arms don't move, nothing moves, it's stiff. And these shapes will be that way. An angle will stay the same size angle. Segments won't shrink or grow. They'll stay the same size. So those are rigid motions. Um, and there are three basic ways to do that. Three different types of rigid motions in the plane. And we're going to be discovering what those are in this lesson and in the next few. Alright, so we're going to try it now. So find this page in your notes and um, also locate your overhead transparency and a marker. You can use a dry erase marker or any, any marker will do. Um, so what we want to do is to be able to describe intuitively what kind of transformation will be required to move the figure on the left to each of the figures one through three on the right. So in order to do that, I'm going to use my transparency and I'm going to trace the figure. So I'm going to trace the figure right here. This is my original. So I'm just going to go around the whole figure and then I'll color that part in. Okay, so once I've got that done, then I'm going to just be moving my transparency and figuring out what I need to do to make it match up. So for number one, it looks like I can just slide it right up. So that's a good way to describe that. I just slide it over up and to the um, to the right and that would describe that transformation. So that's how I got to one. So let's go back to here and now what I want you to do is to do the same thing for two and three and describe what you see. Okay, so you can pause the video and, and do that. Um, okay, so what you might have noticed is that for two, if I slide, I can get the circle part to match up, but not the straight part coming off. So I actually have to slide and flip. So it's, a, it's legal to flip it over. So those coincide exactly. So they're still the same shape. I've moved it in the plane. I had to slide it and I had to flip it. Okay, so then we could come back and do the last one. And slide it over and this one I'm going to have to rotate as well. So I'm going to have to turn it and slide it. Okay, now you've had some experience with the transparency and so let's look at exercise B. Um, this is one of our opening examples and so we have the two segments A, B, and C, D. Um, they could be very far apart on the plane, but how can we find out if they have the same length without measuring them individually? And so, um, what would you do? How could you check? In other words, why do you think we need to move things around on the plane? So go ahead and give that a go and um, pause and we'll come back and talk about that briefly. Okay, so hopefully what you did was you, you took your transparency, traced out AB, and then you'd notice that you need to slide it over, and then you're going to need to give it a little turn to get it to coincide directly. So um, hopefully you saw that they do coincide. So we can um, use methods like this to um, to tell if um, measurements are exactly the same, if shapes are the same, um, and those types of things. So before um, before we go on or before we go to the exit ticket and problem set, I'd like to review some of our terminology. Um, 
Okay, so we've talked about rigid motions in the plane. These are those distance preserving transformations. And um, we said that we were going to look at three types. And in the exploratory challenge, you you experimented with all these three types without maybe necessarily realizing that there were three different types. But the first one you did was called a translation. So that, that will be the one that we look at in, in lessons two and three. And the, this is just a slide. This is a really um, important transformation. And maybe the simplest one, but we're going to use two lessons to look at all of its properties. Okay, and we have to mathematically be able to tell um, how to slide, how far, in what direction, and things like that. Okay, so a translation is a slide. Um, you also had to flip in um, one of those cases, and that's, <clears throat> mathematically, we're going to call that a reflection. So instead of slide, we're going to use translation. Instead of flip, we're going to say reflection. So get used to using the proper vocabulary. And then the last one that we looked at was a rotation or a turn. And so we were able to use combinations of these three types of rigid motions to get that figure to coincide with, with the other three versions of it. Okay, so let's just look at the lesson summary and look at some of this terminology because it can look a little um, confusing at first until we, until we get used to using it. So I would encourage you to keep this lesson summary um, bookmarked and um, return to it if you need to. Okay, so we've talked about transformations. We can name them. So a transformation, and in this case it's named F, is a function that assigns to each point, P, of a plane, a point F of P in the plane. Okay, so F of P is, is just another point, but it is what we've been calling the image. So it's the image of P by F. In other words, our rule F assigns the image F of P to P. Um, more, more commonly, we're going to call it P prime. Okay, so um, the transformation F is sometimes said to move the point P to the point F of P. Okay, so it moves it. Um, we'll also say that it maps it. So we've we've used all this language already in this lesson. We had image, we had map, we had transformation. Um, so we said in this module we're going to mostly be looking at transformations that are given by rules. So we're going to kind of give mathematical definitions to these transformations to tell how, how they can be applied to any point to get the image. Okay, and so one last thing is that if any two, any two points, P and Q, um, given any two points, P and Q, the distance between the images, F of P and F of Q, or P prime, Q prime, will be the same as the distance between the original points, P and Q. And so that's why we say that the transformation preserves distance, or is distance preserving. Okay, so it's just a summary of what we've already talked about. And a distance preserving transformation is called a rigid motion. Another name is isometry. You'll see that later in math. But we're mostly going to talk about rigid motions. And so, like we said, it suggests that the points are moved in a, in a stiff or rigid fashion. Okay, so I encourage you to look at the exit ticket and um, correct your work and then go on to the problem set. And then we'll be back here and in our, our lesson two we'll be looking at properties of translations.